Top of the afternoon, Sunday sessions, episode 23, the holiday edition. Couldn't be more excited to be here with each and every one of you. I appreciate you subscribing to the YouTube channel. Grateful to have you all here. And we're going to get right into it. Live Q&A, episode 23, Bickety Bam, let's go. <laughs> Hello, welcome everyone. How we doing today? It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Absolutely everything in the world to be grateful for because it's all about perspective. I was just watching this video today and it was talking about how, I, I forgot the exact number, but 850 million people don't have access to water. Like that's crazy. That's something, that's almost a billion people. That's something to wake up for in the morning and just be grateful that you can go to your sink and grab a glass of water and chug it or go to your fridge and grab some filtered water. Like that's something to be grateful for. So listen, I'm excited for all of you to be here. If you got any questions, put them in the chat. This is how this operates. You ask your questions, I answer them rapid fire, and it happens just like that. If you're flowing in and you're just joining, put what you expect to end the year at sales totals on amazon.com, right? So if you're gonna end the year at 20,000, 100,000, just put it in the chat. I'd like to see kind of what ranges everybody who's watching is at. You know, whether you're a smaller seller who's just getting started, a medium-sized seller, or a large seller. You know, it doesn't make a difference to me what level you're at. It just helps me better deliver the information I'm going to deliver, considering who's in the chat right now. So I can help you and be as most beneficial to you as I can be. 180K, 20K, these are some great numbers. 500K, 25K, so these are year-end totals. This is huge, 300K from Lauren. 3.5 mil from Alberta. What's up, Alberta? 150K, 600K, this is crazy. 240K, 100 just started, great. First 15K in a year, amazing. That's what I like to hear. This is awesome. One dollar, someone said. What else we got here? We got 11K. This guy's new, he's been selling for six months, 10K. This is amazing. I love this, it just gets me so amped up. 2.3 milli from Maurice. I love it, 390K. Listen, so I, there's a common theme I'm seeing here. Everybody who's saying multiple millions are all members of of these sellers are right. Not a, I don't know, maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's not, but everybody who's saying over a million is a member of our program. We got Wang with one milli, man. Congratulations, you guys have been crushing it. I'm actually probably gonna be down in your area in Florida on like the 17th or 18th of December, so I'll probably be doing something out there, a little, you know, meet up, hang out with y'all, probably over at the Wizards of Ecom, so I'm excited about that. But let's get to some questions here. Can you help me with the sales tax? Does Amazon take care of this or is this something we need to take care of personally? So Amazon, I forgot how long ago it was, maybe 18 months or 24 months or something, they have the marketplace facilitator tax. So essentially they're taking the tax out of the sale of the product and they're keeping it. They're not giving it back to you. So there's not much you need to do on your end, but what I would do, I always suggest consulting with a CPA, right? A tax specialist and just having any questions that you wanna ask, having them readily available so when you get them on the phone, they can answer those questions for you. But with the marketplace facilitator tax, they actually take care of it and it makes your life a lot easier so you're not having to remit taxes to all these states. Hi, ship a lot of those, mostly to FBA, but some FBM. What do you think is the best way to send shoes? Is a poly bag in a shoe box okay? You could poly bag it. A lot of people, they just slap a rubber band around it or two rubber bands. I think the best would be a shrink tunnel, but not everybody has a shrink tunnel and the cost of a shrink tunnel, you know, is a couple tens of thousands of dollars. So, you know, but you could absolutely th throw it in a bag there. You could also use other elastic bands to keep it closed um, during shipping. Sometimes we've sent shoes in the past with just rubber bands on them. And by the time it gets to Amazon, something happens, it rubs against another product, the rubber band snaps and now the shoes can open up so that's not like a foolproof method especially if you're going to be sending FBA because the products get moved around a lot within Amazon's fulfillment centers Maurice said he's expecting to end the year at 100k it's his first year started in April congratulations April what is that the fourth month of the year so you're about seven months in because we're a couple days into December seven months in doing 100k a month what is that? Three, it's like 14,000 a month, right? Seven, four times seven is 28. 
70, yeah, it's 98, so you're doing like 14K a month, I love it. Oh, this is a great question. So Maurice asked, who would be our next hire after a packer? So a packer is someone who packages your product for you, puts the labels on them, boxes them, puts them on a pallet. So Maurice is asking, who's the next employee? He's already got a couple packers. Who's the next employee? So it's really determined on two factors and there's two people you might need to hire. The first one would be a buyer. If your packers are running out of inventory on a daily basis and you can't keep them employed for a full 40 hours a week, then that's a red flag that you need a buyer. So that would be the next position you hire is a buyer. If you have a steady flow of products and the products are turning and you're looking for a new hire, the next employee that you would need would be a picker, right? A picker is someone who literally moves products around your warehouse or your fulfillment center. They pick products, they check invoicing for products, they bring products to packaging stations so your packers can package them and they're just like the liaison between the warehouse and the packers because your packers, you don't want your packers moving left to right, right? If your packers standing here, you want them to stand here the whole day. You don't want them going over here or going over here or going back over here. You don't want your packers going anywhere, going over here for a box. You literally want your packers right here because every step they take, you lose money. And I wanna make you as much money as possible. So eliminate the steps that your packers take and you will watch the money start to multiply in your profits. I promise you that. Is there enough opportunity for wholesale sourcing in Canada? Absolutely. I know a bunch of a handful, probably 15, 20 people who are selling in Canada right now, crushing it. Half of them doing well over six figures a month. So absolutely there's opportunity and you don't have to limit yourself to just Canada. You literally got the United States right across the border. So you can do some cross sourcing where you're sourcing products from the US to list in Canada or purchasing products in Canada to list in the US or just remain in the country. Sourcing in CA to sell in CA, in US to sell in, C in US. Just started, where can I get more information on sales ranks? So I'll give you a brief little breakdown, Sweet Nola, on sales ranks. So sales rank is very basic. It's, it's called the BSR, your best seller's rank. Now, different categories will have different rank values. So what I mean by that is, let's say for example, a product ranked 10,000 in grocery, right? A product ranked 10,000 in grocery probably sells about 800 units a month, maybe even a little more, maybe a thousand units a month. But a product ranked 10,000 in baby will only sell maybe 500 units a month. And the reason why is because grocery is a much more competitive category, right? So the lower the rank, the more volume it sees, same with every category, but the rank doesn't have to be as low to get higher sales opposed to a category like baby or patio or outdoor or sporting goods. You need to have a much lower rank in order to populate a lot of sales in those smaller categories. Now, a good gauge to go by, something we do, is most categories, we shop 200,000 or less, right? 200,000 or less will be the best seller rank that we purchase at. And the reason why is because some of those higher rank products have higher rank margins. Higher rank margins means an opportunity to drop the price so you can decrease the rank in turn, selling more inventory, make more money. As far as ranks, I would just spend some time looking at some YouTube videos. I'm pretty sure we have one. You could just check out our channel and search ranks or Amazon ranking or best sellers rank. I'm sure something will populate. We got years worth of videos on there. And if you don't find it from us, I'm sure somebody else has a great BSR video right here on the internet, right? Leverage Google. What's the best method to find a US supplier? So I'm a firm believer in the Google search. Good old fashioned Google. A lot of people sleep on Google and the opportunity it has. It's such a powerful search engine. You literally search anything you want in there. We're gonna give you all a little nugget too. Try this, find a product like this, for example. This isn't gonna have the manufacturer on it, but this is an Expo dry erase marker, right? So you would take the pack that this comes in, look at who manufactures it, and then call the manufacturer and ask them who their distributors are. That's a little nugget for y'all. Any advice when an extremely large seller comes on your listing and gets a majority of the buy box priority? First of all, it's not your listing. 
It's Amazon's listing. Anybody can sell on it. So something you could do is you could run a 5% coupon. Those are helpful because what a 5% coupon does is repricers that sellers use, especially large sellers like this one you're talking about, their repricers don't detect coupons. So if you have a 5% coupon and you're selling it at $20 and their floor price, they're stuck at $20 and you run a 5% coupon on there, you're actually going to be listing it for $19.50 and their repricer won't detect that price drop. So you'll be able to sell it at $20 with your 5% coupon and turn selling it for $19.50. Amazon will optimize and prioritize your buy box allocation because they love offering discounts to their customers and then you can capitalize on those sales. You could also run PPC on it or you could just hold out and play the long game. I don't know how much inventory they came in with, but that's something to consider as well. Do they have two months worth of inventory? Do they have two days worth of inventory? Do they have two years worth of inventory? These are all metrics that need to be considered. Is these sellers are I going to be opening up again before the end of the year? Yes. So we have maybe two or three spots left, J Max. So if you want to get in there, you got to send me a DM immediately because I can't even guarantee they'll be here till the tomorrow night. I can't guarantee that. We had seven in total that were available as of yesterday morning and four of them are since gone in the past less than 24 hours. So if you're serious about joining, please send me a DM so we can lock your space in. Eric, any recommendations for inventory management software for a warehouse? Ah, this is a great one. And actually, no, I have none. I'm fully transparent and honest with y'all. I do not have a suggestion for inventory management software that's on the market that exists that's helpful. We've tried them all. Oh my God, I can't even list them all. We've tried so many. They're all trash. And the reason why is because Amazon sellers have so many different license plates, as I like to call them, FN SKUs, Merchant SKUs, ASIN, then you have a UPC. Sometimes you'll have one ASIN with four different UPCs if it's a variety pack. It becomes very challenging to track all that information. So what I encourage you to do is use Google Sheets, right? Google Sheets, if you have something in a location, you wanna label all of your locations with a little barcode. You get to print them on the internet, get magnets, slap them on there, get a location, A1A, right? A1B, A1C, and then just keep going like that. When you put that product in that location, scan that barcode into the Excel file, put how many you put there, put the UPC, and then put maybe an ASIN that it applies to, put the expiration date, and put all that information so you're there. What's up, bro? What's up, man? What are you doing? I'm doing a holiday edition. <laughs> the holiday edition. They were just asking about warehouse inventory software. I told them, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all, I don't have any suggestions for that, except for Google Sheets. What do you say? It's tough. It's tough, it's right? Tough. The only one that could work for a smaller operation uh, that's not custom is a uh, skew ball in a circle. Yeah, yeah. So you listen, you could try skew ball. What was that? Maybe five years ago we did skew vault, Sebastian? Yeah, and nobody made changes because I just spoke to them about six months ago just because I know one of the guys that works for them, so I was getting some insight. But they still have issues with kits, with varieties. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. It's it's all those variety packs and kits that really kill you because you got four UPCs connected to one ASIN and then all those UPCs have different expiration dates and they came from sometimes different suppliers. So it becomes a nightmare trying to organize all that. It really does. So I recommend Google Sheets until you're ready to possibly build something yourself. I'm in my first month of selling and I purchased your brand course. Loving it so far and already locked down three smaller brands appreciate all the help that is amazing Kyle that's what I like to hear that's why we do what we do right because it's shit like that that just brings a smile to my face because I know the values there and someone like yourself trusted us enough to make the commitment to purchase it and now it's changing your life I love that man can a product have multiple listings if so how to proceed so I need some clarification on your question can one product like let's say this marker be listed on different ASINs but it's just the one pack marker yes it can but you run the risk of Amazon merging these markers into one listing sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't you really don't have a say as an, as an Amazon seller Amazon makes that final decision hey Eric reached out about opening an account with Avid Wholesale I'm a part of eSellers R.I. yeah Ramon my friend listen it's the end of the year 
crazy over here. For anybody who's in Sellers RI and reached out about Avid Wholesale, I apologize, but right now the priority has been sending inventory to Amazon and we're just so backed up with Avid Wholesale that I just really haven't been able to reach everybody who sent me an email or placed an order with me. So trust me, I'm getting on top of it and you're in there, you're in the queue. It's just gonna take a little time, especially right now, Q4, it's just crazy right now for most businesses. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be addressing all that come 2022. How much FBM do you do? Zero, we do nil, dilch. No FBM right now. We used to do a lot of FBM, scaled it back, now we do all FBA. Oh, this is a good question. So this gentleman's going to a trade show, Doug underscore Cuba. He asked, when you go to a trade show, how do you detect potential suppliers that could have good products without seeing their price list. So you really can't, right? What you're looking for is brand name products that you recognize, that you know sell well, and then you just wanna give them a business card, exchange information, reach out after the trade show, get a catalog, you know? Or you should be savvy enough where if you've been doing this for a few years, you should be able to literally see a product like this Synergy drink and know that you normally pay $1.60 for every bottle of this, right? So then you can just pick that up when you see it on the table and pick it up and say, oh, this is a great product, I carry this product. You know, what's the case going for this? You know, and then they give you the number and then you get an idea. And then you can run the numbers in your head just on the spot and be like, okay, that works for me or that doesn't. Is there any discounts available? I'd like to place volume wholesale orders frequently. I know there's an opportunity to grow this relationship together. We should be able to make something happen, so let's make it happen. The more experience you have, the easier it will be to recognize those things on the spot at these trade shows. This is a good question as well, King. Do you like low turnover, high margin, or high turnover, low margin? I like them both. I'm not gonna discriminate here. There's enough love to go around. I want both. Absolutely, I want them slower skews that make me a lot of money. I want those fast skews that make me a little less money. A healthy mix of both will grow your business. All right, cool. Well, listen, my friends, this has been a pleasure. I enjoy spending my evenings with you, my days with you, my mornings with you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a happy and safe holiday. I'm sure I'll see you again. This is just the first of many end of the year videos. So keep in mind, always stay grateful and stay lit. Adios, my friends.